Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to a very special episode. This week we had an absolute awesome week here for you for Downshift Racing League's recap. Today for our Tuesday race it is Magnum Stars European Cup. We have finally moved on from the American Classics and we're now into the European Classics. This is 1970s to 1980s european uh, classic road cars we've got quite a diverse grid we've got a couple bmw m3s i am running the 89 version and magnum star is running the evolution version of the m3 the 89 then we've got a couple of ferrari 308 gtbs we've got a 911 turbo we got a bmw csl 3.0 from the 70s i want to say i think drew is driving that and then actually funny enough we have a pantera that bulldog is running so again quite a nice grid of what you would exactly expect from awesome european classic cars and of course this is on dragon trail seaside this was going to be the the course that we had done for the alfa romeo 4c group b spec series race of mine a couple of weeks back but uh found out last minute that it doesn't have rain and I'll be honest, I'm quite happy that there isn't rain on this course because it is absolutely amazing. And I think adding weather would just make it uh, already very technical and challenging course would make it even worse. And to the keen eyed viewers out there, yes, I did actually add a heart rate monitor. So for those of you wanting to watch how focused I am or how much I'm uh, trying, you can actually now see. I think it's kind of a nice fun thing to add. I was able to it was found a really cheap and easy way to add it in. So I don't know if it's really going to be a game changer in any way, shape, or form, but I thought it would just be kind of fun to have. So this race we had done just before the 1.49 update where all the suspension changes and all that kind of stuff had uh, had been updated. So this was, we had gotten, we'd spent quite a bit of time over these past couple of weeks of figuring out what cars that we want to do and then really just get into the nitty gritty of making sure that these cars are just tuned up, ready to go. And this was a fantastic race. This was, like I said, this is the first race that I was able to run clutch and the shifter. And during the qualifying laps, I was just rolling through the gears, having a great time. And then I get to the race and I'm miss shifting all over the place. I'm like, you've got to be joking. <laughs> and if you really think about it, I, I believe the issue that I was having is during the qualifying, you were literally just one with your car and the course, and you're just focusing on trying to get the best lap time that you can. When it comes to the race, you've all of a sudden got to be focusing on so many different things. You've got people diving in all around you. You've got to worry about the racing line that may be coming up into grip or falling out of grip, depending on your tire wear, which you really don't see a whole lot of in qualifying. And it's just, there's a million different things that you're focusing on. And yeah, it was just, with, with that being said, I don't, this was kind of a nice thing is I've done enough practicing and I've done enough tuning of this car where it felt good. And I could just kind of tune everything out focus on my driving and would know that I would have a pretty good race and honestly in my mind it was all right there were a lot of the race it was me trying to catch up to Drew and it was really agitating because I think Drew and myself were pretty evenly paced pretty evenly matched it was just the fact that I kept on miss shifting and having these issues with not getting the shifting quite perfect that I knew of that it was a little bit more reliable and didn't have all these mischiefs that I would be right up next to him and we'd be fighting a lot more often. He had a couple of penalties where it started to you know bring me closer. But I think at the end of the race, it was just the fact that if I was shifting better, it would have been a lot more interesting. So this is going to be kind of a quick segment, if I'll be honest. Uh, it was mainly myself, Ring, and Drew towards the back. Ring would have a couple of issues with his Ferrari would kind of snap over steer and try to kill him. And then he would be behind me, he'd catch up. The car was super quick, so I knew that as soon as he got in front of me, there was just no chance. So there was, the hope was that mistakes would creep in and I might be able to eke out in front of him. But uh, in the end, mistakes actually got more to me. I mean, as these mischiefs were happening, I didn't have any moment that was in particular that was really 
like this ruined my race kind of moment. There were just these little moments where I just kind of outbreak myself. I get really close to a wall or, or just something like that. And then finally, when we get to the very end, then the mistake hit me. Oh, damn it. So when I started sim racing, I just got into the habit of right foot throttle, left foot brake. And because I never had a clutch or a shifter, it just was fine. The situation that happened here was that it had become muscle memory that whenever I have an issue, I just slam my left foot down because that used to be the brakes. And that's my clutch now. So in that moment, I just completely forgot. I'm slamming down the clutch. And I'm like, why am I not slowing down? And then it's like, ah, right. I got to move that. And we're already in the wall. Look at that. Cool. <laughs> so it's just... I am sad because I had done so much practicing and, and really figured out this car. I believe in a practice lobby, I was able to get down to about a 1 minute 47 second, 1 minute 46 time. So I was using that kind of as a good reference point. And then as you look at the times here, they're just 150, 151, 152 is kind of the average. So it's just not anywhere close, unfortunately. But at the end of the day, the big thing that matters is that I had a lot of fun. It was a really good, fun race. Just was sad that I wasn't as competitive as I wanted it to be. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. Race number two for this week is our endurance race. This is our multi-class endurance race on Grand Valley Highway. And our part of our team influencer, we've got Drew, who is running group one. And we actually swapped out cars for this one. He is running the Peugeot 908 HDI F8P. So as far as our exclusivity contract with Nissan, we uh, decided to get rid of group one because their group one car, let's be honest, was not all that competitive, not all that great. For our team, I'm running group two. So that would be the Nissan GTR Nismo GT500, the 2016 model year. Of course, we've got got to go fast with our standard Nissan Nismo GTR group three car. And then we've got Paven in our group four Nissan GTR. And for this race, it was actually quite enjoyable for a lot of different reasons. I got a little bit more practicing done than per usual. And this one as well, I knew that the Group 3 car and the Group 4... Well, it was the Group 3 car and the Group 1 were both potentially questionable choices. They were both maybe not as competitive as some of the other team's cars, and by going into that exclusive idea of only using Nissan. I knew that those two groups would be the ones that we'd be struggling with. So the fact that we've started to kind of deviate from that was able to get us quite a bit of a little bit of an extra edge. Uh, group one was a little bit small this week, so it was literally just Shio and Drew. And the Peugeot 908, which was actually a spec car that we did a couple of weeks ago now, almost a month ago, where that was on Alsace, that thing rips. And I actually quite enjoyed doing the Peugeot. It was just trying to make sure that you could keep it on the track. That's just kind of the problem with the Group 1 cars is that they're that quick. Uh, but the nice thing was, is that the Group 2 car, the one that I was in, the GT500, was actually a very strong contender. Now, the main rival that I personally was kind of focusing on this race was Jay, who was in the Acura NSX, the Group 3 car. Now, the thing with Jay is that he knows how to tune cars and knows how to really pick the right choices, because with a lot of these races that we've done, is he doesn't say a whole lot, but then suddenly you finish and you're like, wait, how was I a minute behind this guy? And he hasn't said really much all race. It's like, wait a minute, how do you do that? And spoiler alert, that kind of happened this race again. But all in all, it was not too bad of a race. I was able to keep out of the mistakes for the most part. As per usual, I always have one or two moments. And in this case, you know, I went... 10 laps without having any issues and then there's this moment where I put down the throttle a little bit too early in the tunnel and that was just kind of the issue with this car. I was running on traction control too a lot of the time because it had so much power to the rear wheels and this was on the day that the 1.9, the 1.49 update had dropped. 
So everybody's tuning was completely screwed up. All the tire wear was screwed up. We're not sure exactly how these cars are working anymore. But that was just one of the things is what the tire wear is at the rear tires. At this point at lap 10, they had really started to fall away. And that was that moment where I just had that snap of oversteer. And to be quite honest, that was pretty much the most interesting part of the race. I mean, for me, I think a lot of people were only doing one stop, so we'd be on medium tires. Actually, I think a lot of people were running two stops. I just managed to just run the fuel mode down low enough where I only did a single stop on medium tires and went back to medium tires and did pretty all right with that. And with this, because we're just kind of running strategy and a lot of us weren't doing constant fighting, there's moments where we'd have to worry about lapped cars and there were a couple of moments actually that I had some very close fighting with um, an individual whose name I will not really say verbally, but we'll just call him Mr. Airport because um, if you say that in the airport, you'll probably uh, get tackled by the TSA. So uh, I had some close fights with Mr. Airport because There'd be times where I'd be coming up to lap him, but his Group 3 car, I think it was his Subaru BRZ, it was actually really quick, so I was actually struggling a little bit because I couldn't just dive on him on, on the inside and just run away with it, and he was, he was keeping up pretty good pace there. And that was kind of the main issue that we were having with a lot of this, was just making sure that we're seeing out of everybody's way, and it's... Grand Valley Highway is a little bit of a struggle because it's a really narrow track and a lot of twisty and turny corners, so there's not a lot of great opportunities to pass. So that was just kind of the main issue, is, is finding the right moment to pass, because there would be times where you'd spend all of Sector 1 and 2 behind somebody, and then at the very start of Sector 3, when you get to the bricks, bridge section, is the first spot that you can really pass somebody. And then if you don't do it there, you do it on the back straight. And that's really it. So I know this next part won't necessarily be in chronological order, but uh, we'll just kind of jump around a little bit. Because as some of these races go, since they're not all that eventful, we have uh, some conversations of our own. This will be a great example to showcase uh, why necessarily I don't include the audio from a lot of uh, races, where I just kind of have the main engine noise and then the voiceover. Because sometimes it kind of sounds like this. Like a <laughs> Ever take a <laughs> from the <laughs> and pull them from the <laughs> Thanks for letting me lead a lap, Drew. But, to get Yeah. Of the Either way, I just ain't into it. I'm just not into I agree. Look at all this audio I can't use. <laughs> What's new? Welcome to the f race. Yeah, welcome to the club. I, I wouldn't know. I'm on a controller. <laughs> well, I can't feel my corner. That's my only problem. Everything else is fine. I can't feel f nothing. <laughs> I can feel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right on, brother. Hey, this is Westby's but... video. Uh, it's gonna be a 15 yeah. minute race, and uh, I'm gonna give it to you in 30 seconds. It started and ended. There we go. <laughs> it started and it ended. <laughs> See you next time, boys. Yeah. Half the time you can't even use anything from I the beginning of the end of the race anyway. I know you were looking right. for 50 minutes of action, but... Uh, oh. Nope, not this time. <laughs> I would have said something fast. <laughs> that didn't happen. It's just <laughs> one big, long, central bleep. But we have some a little bit more uh, age-appropriate conversations, which these ones, in my mind, were kind of the more funny ones that I enjoy having. Drew's fast. He's so fast, he's gonna crash, and then I'm gonna pass him. No. Hey, 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 hey. So, <laughs> so, Bulldog, here's the interesting thing. If you would have said that about Paven or myself, I would have agreed with you. Drew is a different animal. He don't crash. He fast and consistent. Oh, you guys better shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, understood. Shut up. That's don't how crash, you Drew. Don't crash! I can You're take don't crash, I can't think you guys talked me up about it. <laughs> You're so good. All Stop going around, me. Drew! I don't pay you with enough for this <laughs> How about that? Yeah, I like that better. <laughs> God like damn it! This is going really good. 
So we're giving Drew a little bit of a hard time, and as it goes, <laughs> he was quite a ways out in front of everybody, and it finished up that way as well, just way out in the way out in first place, and Shio trailing quite a ways behind. And same thing with with uh, me and Jay in group two, where Jay had finished probably about 20 seconds ahead. And he would have been a little bit farther ahead as well, but he decided to stop in front of the stop-finish line at the last moment because he didn't want to... <laughs> when it comes to some of these endurance races, if you have 10 seconds left and you go for the fifth start-finish line, you have to do another full lap. So he's just like, nah, I'm done. <laughs> I've got like 30 seconds to Westby. I'm just going to stop right here and wait for the time to go down. And funny enough, even though I was on a fuel mode and really concerned about my fuel, we got to this very interesting last moment. Out of fuel. Out of fuel. Nah, Westby. Across the line. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. No, we got, we got. I had that planned. So I was really keeping an eye on feel for the good portion of the race, but then when it came to the end, I was really just trying to push in it and then kind of ran out. So at the end of the day, um, I was quite happy with that race. Only two mistakes, really, just the tunnel and then this, a couple of laps later, a section after the tunnel, and really good at race, really good race, no complaints. So for our Sunday race, we are running High Speed Ring Reverse with 600 power point mid rear engine cars. Any drivetrain, you can take pretty much anything you can with the mid engine rear and as long as it's 600 power points and you can tune it as any way you want as long as it's under that limit. So we have Quite a nice array of vehicles. I was actually able to acquire the newly released 2007 Lamborghini Gallardo. I wanted to try out for the first time tuning my own car because as a lot of these Sunday races go, I kind of don't have a lot of time to practice. So I'm watching Discord as the week goes on and somebody goes, yay, I found a good car. I know that this will run quickly. I normally, you know, pretty late in the week, acquire the car, get the tune set up and just run. This situation, I'm like, no, I'm going to stop copying other people. I'm going to start really working on my own. And with this Gallardo, this is kind of a problem because when it comes to these PowerPoint limit races on Sundays, is that you can get a 450 PowerPoint car, but, you know, the NAS, the suspension, uh, racing transmission, turbos, you can just add it all, get up to the 600 PowerPoint limit, quickly, as well as adding racing soft tires, and you're good. With the Gallardo, I think it's either just above or just below 600 power points, and then keep in mind that when you change to racing hard tires or intermediates, that it raises the power point, and then you need adjust the suspension, so that raises it more, and then you need a racing transmission so you can adjust the speed, and that raises the power point. So all of a sudden, if this car was 600 to begin with, we're now already talking 700, 750. So then I had to add all sorts of ballast and stuff. So I, it was just a lot of work to get this car to work. And I'm quite happy I did because they ran a test lobby with Shio and Flanders and it worked beautifully. And as you can see here, Shio decided to put a wrench in things and say, hey, not only is it 600 power points and it was high speed ring reverse, we've also got rain. So you need to test your car in the wet, make sure it's fast there, and test the car in the dry when the crossover period happens, make sure it's fast there too. So it's just, there's so many things going on at the same time. And in the first couple of laps, may I say, I was worried as per usual that I would get my nose up in the middle of things and crash out on lap one. It didn't happen. I raced a little bit more conservatively, knowing that the tires were colder than hell, that there was water everywhere. I just kind of kept out of it. And I'm glad I did because I was able to avoid a lot of mistakes. It gave a lot of people a lot of room so they could have their own issues. And I would just be able to have a lot of space to, if I started to understeer, I'd be able to correct it and not run into anybody. So it was pretty good. Until about lap three, where we have this moment happen. Whoa, here we go. Whoa! Whoa! That was sick! I'm going to have to see that in replay. That was a drift and I never touched the wall. 
So even though I got a fully suspend, a fully customizable suspension, I didn't really work on it a whole lot, and I just rose it about five points on the front and the rear. But part of the new update is that uh, weight distribution is now a thing when it comes to it. So when you're starting to brake, the car will actually pitch. And in this case, it pitched forward, the rear end lifted up and spun out, and somehow I kept it into a drift and kept it out of the wall. And as you can see in this replay, millimeters away from the wall, and I'm still impressed that I didn't get any penalties and still didn't collide with it or anything. But yeah, it was just crazy. So at this point, I'm still trying to keep it to myself. I'm noticing that there are a lot of people still in front of me, and thankfully Boost is on. So if I get a little bit off the pack, I'm able to kind of rejoin up with them. But again, I'm not pushing myself to pass anybody yet. It's just I want to keep my NOS for later because it's still pretty wet out. I don't want to just start abusing this and then realize that I don't have enough for later. I'm just really hanging back, again, just trying to drive as conservatively as possible. Yes, I'm getting some places, but then they're promptly being taken back as people are making those back up, as people are driving a little bit more aggressively than I am. But at this point, it's just, I'm just, my focus is to stay on the track and to not have any issues. And then finally, halfway point comes through. The track is really dry on the uh, racing line now. So I decided at about a lap 11 that I go in for the pits for some fuel and for racing hard tires. And I want to point out right here that I made a conscious decision that, you know, by the end of lap 11, I had about one to two laps of fuel left. So I'm sitting there going, you know, I don't need 100% fuel. I'm trying to think to myself, how much do I actually need? I go, you know, 90% is probably about good. And I went to the end of the race thinking, all right, this is where we need to be. I come out of the pits and very quickly I have Drew and his Lamborghini Murcielago come up past me. And at this point, am I starting to go, all right, this is game time. This is where I'm going to really use, I'm actually going to use Drew to my advantage. I'm going to sit in his slipstream, see if I can use less fuel, see if I can in some moments actually use NAS to keep up with them and just the two of us go through some of these laps and let people around us pit do what they need to do and then I might be able to make up some good amount of times and I did actually that was a very good strategy and worked for quite some time so using Drew by about lap 14 towards the end of lap 14 I have now caught up with the pack. I'm asking the group going, okay, it says I'm like 50 seconds down from first. Am I actually really that far down? And by the looks of it, it's like, no. Like, it seems like second through sixth, we're all kind of real close to one another. Well, at least third through sixth. So we have quite a few of us are all together. We're just hoping that we can have some good fighting and see what we can do with this. And then finally, we get to the next big point of my race it is the beginning of lap 16 i've moved up to fourth place and i've got ring coming up behind me we're approaching turn one and then this happens you going for inside or outside outside all right i'll keep it up on the inside oh ah oh, there we go that was a snap on the white line oops <laughs> Did you get collected too? Was shit. that my problem? No, I was just trying to avoid you. Okay. So it turns out, like I was saying before, same situation kind of as uh, lap three of the car pitched forward, the rear end lifted up. I noticed that the laps previous to 16, I was noticing it a little bit. I was able to just kind of correct it, but I was worried about ring coming up behind me. So let's focus on that. And I didn't actually collide with him. He was able to hit the high side, but because he was on the now wet line, you have some issues of its own applied with the wall and again dramatic for both of us because i thought i hit him i'm like seeing behind letting him you know get his thoughts back together let him get back onto the road and i'm sitting there going oh man but at the same time too got a couple of penalties not the end of the world i still got six laps or something to go and use those six laps i did because again i just put my head down 
I continued to race hard, using the last of my NOS that I hadn't used from before, and had some very close battling with both Berserker and with Drew and Paven. It was great up to the last part until... Oh, I messed up. Drew, no! That top line never came out. I couldn't really run a couple corners, right? Yeah, it never dried out. Those far softs must have helped Whoa. a slight bit there. Whoa! Oh, you didn't have to. F I'm out of gas. Oh, no, 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 oh. no, no. No! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Oh, Fuck yeah, I'm gonna get a third. Oh, I got the third. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay, I got the third. Alright. All right. Okay. Yeah. What the I went too deep in that turn and just dumped it. <laughs> oh, what a lucky ending for me. <laughs> yes, I ran out of fuel. And not only did that happen, it cost me a place. I saw people around me were getting penalties, and I was not focusing on my fuel level at all. And this was going to be the interesting conversation is if I would have spent an extra couple of seconds in the pits getting some more fuel, how would have that ended up? I would have been a couple of seconds behind. Would have I still been competitive though in those last couple laps? Would have I still been where I was? Or what would have happened if I noticed that sooner and started to roll down the fuel mode? It really affects the top speed. So maybe I would have lost a couple of seconds there fighting against some other people and not having the top speed. So it's a lot of what if, what if, what if. And I know that just rolling the field mode down a couple of notches would have been able to save me a couple of tenths. But uh, at the end of the day, it is what it is. I fought valiantly, started in eighth, finished in fourth. That was cool how that all ended up. And that was our week. So uh, again, please stay tuned. We've got some more weeks more awesome recaps coming on up so again if you enjoyed this content make sure to like comment and subscribe we've got a lot more coming up again thanks so much for watching hope you guys have a great day today take care bye